on this week's hot list, rightfully ours, why Indonesia is asking its former colonial master for the return of the Java Man and other artifacts. Workplace wrong, an executive in the U.S. is punished for sex with a staff member. We ask legal expert Sadi Latif why that just doesn't happen here. And holy ghosts, what Indonesians like to dress up as for Halloween. Hello and welcome. This is Hot Indonesia. I'm Dalton Tanonaka in Jakarta. Let's get to it. My co-hosts, Mili Lukito, CEO of the Mobiliati Group from her home in Jakarta, and Linda Ibrahim, writer and business consultant based in the capital city. Hot topic number one, rightfully ours. The link between apes and humans became clearer with the discovery of bones in 1891 in East Java. At the time, they were the oldest fossils of its kind ever found, possibly one million years old. But the remains of the so-called Java Man have been in display in a museum in the Netherlands ever since, and Indonesia wants him back. A government team is also asking for several other items, including Hindu statues and a Quran owned by a national hero. Uh, Linda, I actually was surprised to learn that Java Man wasn't here in Java. Indonesia has been asking for him since 1954. He belongs here. Um, yes, ideally every artifact of a particular country should be in that country, display for public to see, you know, for school children to learn, just for humanity to witness. That's the ideal. And in, in that sense, I agree. The problem is uh, during the colonial times, uh, they, the colonialists, not just the Dutch, the British actually, <laughs> one of the worst offenders, um, they just happened to already have archaeologists at that point. You know, so when it came to all of these countries in Asia and Africa, they had the knowledge. So they discovered and they realized the importance of it. And because they had the power, they brought it back to their homeland. So that's what happened. And then these countries start getting their independence, you know, sort things out, and then finally realizing that they're all important to the country's own history. So that's why they're asking these artifacts to be returned. Well, yeah. well Linda, Linda, that, that's not an excuse. And I, that, it's not an, I, I, I'm surprised to hear you give them a but if this, because if you came to my house, you found some money in my couch. It's not your money, it's my money, right? So it's... But, but, no, 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 Delta, bear in mind at that time, there was not even an Indonesia yet when they discovered this. The, the country of Indonesia formed in 1945. You're saying one... politically, but the people were here. Uh, it, right. it, 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 anyway, right. so I, I, I strongly believe it should be here. No, I, I do, um, I do too, but uh, okay. if I may, uh, if I may... Uh, no, I, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even give them an out. Like they, they discovered it, but no, they should talk to the, the, the leaders here. There were leaders here. We weren't leaderless here. That's why I say yes. I, I understand. Them. Oh, but anyway, but, like, okay. Yeah. Now, now, no, to be fair, the Dutch have returned um, other items in the past, including a dagger owned by a Javanese prince a few years back, Diponegoro. Um, let, let me get to Millie. Millie, but we shouldn't have to ask for these kind of items back from a colonial ruler, right? Correct. Um, but uh, there is this very classic uh, case of the Mona Lisa. The Mona Lisa was uh, painted by Leonardo da Vinci and it was owned by the Italian government then. But during the Renaissance, for some reason, it uh, changes hands and ownership to the French government. And up until now, it is, of course, in the Museum Louvre in uh, Paris. And it has it is garnering six to eight million visitors every year. So the Italian government has always again petitioned for it to be to be either shared or either returned uh, rightfully to them. So in this case, I fully agree uh, with uh, Indonesian government to be able to quote unquote collect back all uh, museum pieces, uh, uh, antique pieces that are still scattered, especially a lot in uh, the Dutch uh, Republic at the moment. Uh, so. Dalton, yes, this is a very good um, point uh, for our audience to know that there are so many of Indonesian artifacts out there still scattered around the world. 
Yeah, and your, your, your example of the Mona Lisa is, is a good one. That's a very good example. You know, the whole issue of cultural looting goes back centuries, as we know, on countries, other countries holding cultural treasures um, of other countries, including England, France, Germany, and the U.S., uh, and, and Linda, as you mentioned, most of these were colonial rulers, some items bought by individuals on the black market. Um, in any case, historical works belong in the country of origin. I agree with that. There was no objection from me whatsoever. What I was trying to get at is that once it's returned to Indonesia, we have to look at our capability at this point. Can we do that? Do you, do you know how many museums have been robbed in Indonesia in the past five years alone? I see, uh, you know, people nodding yeah. here. I mean, as recent as like I think three months ago, somewhere in uh, I think East Java, there was also robbed and the whole artifacts gone. So yes, I agree. It should be returned now that we are as a country now. We're we're in the we're we're we're, we're free. We're independent. We should get our artifacts back from the colonial rules, but. It shouldn't stop at that. Can we take care of them? Are you saying that we? Are you saying we can't? We can't handle it. We can't. We can't Delton, uh, display actually, them properly. Delton actually go to museums in Indonesia, and I don't even talk about little museums scattered outside Jakarta. I go to the old town. We have like about five museums there. Anyone who's actually gone to the museums in Jakarta, in the old town, the much brighter old town will cry to look at how they display, take care, and preserve the artifacts. I speak to art curators, for example, some of them are really concerned. Looking at the uh, paintings of S. Ono hanging there, and it's just been eroded. That's the reality. Yeah. Linda, Linda, I, I understand. It's, it's, a, it's a major concern of what we have and what we could get back from other countries, but that's another issue. My, my point in this segment was um, historical relics belong in the country of their origin. We got to take, we have to take care of uh, them once they get here. And that, and you know, whether it's our ineptitude or, or, or lack of scientific, uh, uh, you know, uh, history, uh, we, we have to do better on this side. But the point is we must get those back um, and we shouldn't have to ask the Dutch or any other country to hand it back to us. They should do it voluntarily as some countries have already done. Okay, Hot Indo will continue shortly with Workplace wrong. Laws on office affairs are tough in other places. Legal analyst Sadi Latif joins us to explain why little punishment here. sama dengan The Indonesia Channel. Saya mendorong semua entitas, semua entitas untuk bergabung dalam upaya ini dengan mempromosikan produk dan layangan mereka di platform digital yang unik ini. Indonesia. I love the food. Mmm, yummy. Wow. I'm gonna hunt four ingredients. Now I'm ready to cook. Let's go to the kitchen. It's done. Let's meet to eat. Foodipedia on the Indonesia channel. Segala sesuatu di sekitar kita mungkin berbeda. Tetapi semangat kami masih sama. Untuk memberikan pelayanan yang terbaik. Dan bahkan lebih dari sebelumnya. Kami peduli dan kami di sini untuk Anda. 
untuk, untuk memberikan kenyamanan layaknya di rumah Anda sendiri. sendiri. Hi, I'm Rory He. You're watching the Indonesia channel, the home of good sport. I'm Chen Ming Ngân of VCC Net Viet in Hanoi. I'm Thai Rat Thom Ya of Thailand's Thai Rat TV in Bangkok. I'm Monica Samborit from the National Television of Cambodia in Phnom Penh. I'm Raymond Goh of Malaysia's TV Tiga in Kuala Lumpur. I'm Glenda Chong of Singapore's Channel News Asia. I'm Rai Sachin Thami of the Indonesia Channel at the ASEAN Secretariat in Jakarta. This is your weekly look into the dynamic Southeast Asia region. ASEAN Today on the Indonesia Channel. The Best of Bali takes viewers on a special guided tour to the treasures of the Island of the Gods. Well, the romantic dinner is beautiful. The Best of Bali, only on the Indonesia Channel. You're watching Hot Indonesia with Millie, Linda, and me. Here's hot topic number two, workplace wrong. He was the successful professional basketball coach of the NBA's Boston Celtics, but Ime Udoka had sex with a subordinate staff member, which violated team policies, and he was suspended for a full year. Originally termed consensual, an investigation apparently found more to it, thus resulting in the harsh penalty. Now, all of this came out in the last two months. No one is saying a crime has been committed, but... Whether it's in Boston or London or Jakarta, Millie, it is never wise to become romantically involved or sexually involved with a co-worker. It happens all the time because they meet every day. And of course, there is some something that may happen uh, between dynamics uh, with human beings, especially co-workers. I don't know. This is very difficult to prove whether this is wrong or this is consensual. And I would really like to know... Uh, how uh, Sari Latif uh, see it from her perspective, from the legal perspective. I also would like well, to we'll, know. We'll, we'll bring her. Yeah, we'll bring her in shortly. But uh, I, I want to set the stage for her now, Linda. Um, you and I uh, know men and women in in workplaces across this country are subjected to pressures uh, of this kind and even abuse. Why don't victims speak up more? Uh, power relation, because you know a lot of. There's more people needing the job in Indonesia than the jobs are available. So a lot of people really hang on to their jobs. And for women, it's even harder than that. You know, fewer choices for us. So for a lot of women, especially the ones who are past a uh, certain age and they have uh, or they have children to uh, to support, it's really becoming very important for them if they still have a job for them to hold, hang on to that. So they're becoming even more um I think susceptible to being a bully into submission and into, you know, enduring this harassment. I feel sorry for them. As for the young ones, it's, uh, it's the same result, but for a different reason, because they're young, they're, you know, first timers in the job, they would like to keep at least a track record of working for two years or three years of first time. So, you know, they're going to withstand any demands, you know. So I've seen it. I've seen it with my coworkers, actually. Sad. Yeah, I mean, we've all we've all been in offices where you see that, whether it's verbal or physical or both. Now, I wanted to discuss this topic because here in Indonesia, the issue of workplace harassment and violence is finally getting some legal attention. Sadi Latif is our TIC legal analyst based in Bali. Sadi, uh, Sadi there has been some recent movement, right, in getting protection for victims. Um, is it now... Uh, a bit better and more than just an internal affair? Well, I don't know if it's a, a bit better now, but uh, we, uh, the country now have uh, a, a new, fresh uh, definition of what sexual harassment in the past. Um, it has um, always connotation towards rape rather than sexual harassment. There was not a, a definitive or detailed uh, definition on sexual harassment. So after two decades, finally, our regulator has passed through the bill, the Law on Sexual Violence Crimes, or we call it the TPKS law, um, which was, I said, um, rectified uh, in April this year. So they've given a new define, which covers about four points, um, uh, Dal Dalton, which is uh, in, in reference to uh, whether it's a verbal or nonverbal uh, sexual harassment, um, also about contraception, forced contraception, forced sexual intercourse, and uh, sexual exploitation is one of them as well. So actually, when it comes to sexual harassment um, in the workplace, it has actually been um, regulated by the uh, manpower of um, uh, the, the law of manpower. 
but not many companies apply that as part of their SOP or the standard of procedure um, in, in the companies or taking it very seriously if there is a violation on sexual um, you know, conduct. Yeah, and if a if a woman or man feels they've been uh, you know harassed or, or even or violated in some way, you know going to your boss who is not on the same page is will, will get you fired maybe. So there there is fear in that. But you're saying there is a law. If if a person wanted to go outside to. Um, the prosecutors or the police and file a complaint, they could oh, now, definitely. right? Definitely, they could. They, 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 they could. They could before, but our, our, our a, a law enforcement doesn't have a definite, like a, a define what is sexual well, harassment. And, and that's why they didn't go before, because there's no law, but now there is. And if they become educated and, and workplaces put it in their, in their policy, like you said, their SOP, then uh, hopefully this problem will begin to reduce. Um, Millie, question for Sadi. Uh, I should probably be more supportive here, but uh, I know some women are using, uh, okay, the, the, the need to survive, of course, yes, as Linda said, but some women are actually using um, sexuality, sensuality as a bullet for them to get ahead. So how yeah. uh, how do you, uh, how yeah, do you yeah. manage this? How does companies manage this? Can I answer that? <laughs> oh, is that the question to me or can That's I? That's to you. Yes. Okay, so I think, um, I mean, that's a very good, you know, very good uh, thoughts and question as well. Um, you know, sexual harassment or sexual exploitation, it's not just on women, but uh, men can also be a victim in this. And I think that uh, it's very important, two things at the point that I want to come across, uh, bring across is the importance of anti-sexual violence policy in the workplace, including in your work con in the contract. You know, like uh, in your contract now, I've seen a couple of companies who are taking this seriously that they do not... Um, what do you call it? They do not compromise with anything that has any sexual uh, harassment in the workplace. You know, that could be uh, also a, a, a part of a clause or an article that you need to put in that. And second, also that the human um, HR uh, also has to be a safe place to receive reports of sexual violence. First of all, you need to listen to both parties and do an investigation. So if you put this in your company uh, rules or even in a contract, then this is a way that uh, yourself or anyone who's in a who are uh, employer to um, do an investigation on it. Yeah, and, and and to be to disclose, I mean, we, we do that here at the Indonesia channel. I, I say time and time again to staff members, you cannot say that, you cannot, you know, don't even go there. Um, it's just an education process as well as a legal process. Um, Linda, question for Sadi. If oh, with the new law now, if mm -hmm. a woman experiences uh, the sexual harassment, what should be like the first things she does? Well, uh, are we talking the workplace or just in general? If you uh, workplace. Since okay. We're talking about workplaces. Right. Yeah, we're talking uh, workplace. Uh, like I said, uh, the human resource department. It should be the first uh, person that can go to because uh, yeah. human resource are supposed to be in a way the mediator between the uh, the employer and the employee. Right. So that there have to be the first place that they can talk to on that. And I also. It, there's a bit of a predicament when it comes to HR because they're also working for the company yes. and sometimes they are strongly more towards the employer. Yes. So it is always good to get an outside, um, you know, um, help. Um, we have a lot of, um, you know, movement by civil society um, that they can go to and make, you know, have a discussion about that. Um, that's why it is also very important also to, um, I know that having a lawyer or an attorney or, ac you know, access to that, you know, people always connotate that to being expensive, but I think we need to stop, you know, having that kind of culture um, for ourselves, you know, so that you could always have someone that you can talk to and someone that who can represent you. Yeah, and someone like yourself who does a lot of pro bono and community work, right. um, go talk to somebody who knows the law. Right. I, I want to have one thing to um, to um, to let you guys know uh, or the public know that uh, I have a friend who actually did a movement uh, on call uh, no recruit list. So what oh. happens? This have you heard that, Linda? Right. So employers yeah. they can yeah. go to no recruit list and find out if there's any employees who had a history or report on them that they have done any sexual harassment in the workplace or even just mm. as an individual because obviously you do not want anyone working for you who have that kind of behavior you know so i think okay. that's also something uh, and that's you can go online is that how you get it 
Yeah, you can just Google search. It's called No Recruits on No Recruits. Um, they'll tell you there's an app app that you can re like you know ask questions and list. They don't give the entire database, but it's just a particular name. Um, so yeah, okay. that's the good info. Sadi Latif, TIC Legal Analyst. Thank you very much for all that input. Hot Indo will continue shortly with Holy Ghosts. What Indonesians like to dress up as on the scariest day of the year. Indonesia Channel. This is the Indonesia Channel. You are watching IFA Playlist. IFA on the Indonesia Channel. You're watching Hot Indonesia from Jakarta, hot topic number three, Holy Ghosts. Halloween, a Christian observance originally to honor the departed. It's evolved into a global costume party, including here in Indonesia. We have our minions and Avengers, but characters from horror films are especially popular. Favorites including Susanna and Mak Lampir. Uh, ladies, uh, does Halloween go way back here, or is it kind of a recent trend, uh, Linda? Oh, very recent. I think maybe 15 years. For with certain, certain circles, very, very tiny circles that actually hang out at expats, yes, sure. Go way back, uh, I guess, to the 80s, but uh, for the majority of urbanites in Indonesia, I'd say about 15 years. So you never dressed up as a kid? Uh, going around collecting candy like in other countries? Of course not. It wasn't part of culture. That's very American culture. Yeah, oh, well, not just American, but other countries. Um, you know, one year I went to a party here as a uh, mummy, um, and then I started unraveling, and it was in a nice site. Um, another time I went as a giant dice uh, with two others. What did you dress up if you did at all, Millie? Because a lot of Halloween parties are for adults now, not just kids here in this country, right? You know, like Linda said, it's uh, not part of Indonesian culture, actually, ha this Halloween. But uh, Indonesians have this ve uh, very strong love affair towards scary movies yeah. and then anything goes. Um, and uh, I actually uh, spoke to a psychologist friend and he said it's because generally in everyday life, Indonesians feel that they are repressed you know and and they have to accept it by being 
good Javanese because we are usually smiling, you know. But during Halloween now, everyone lo- wants to look as scary as and as ghostly as possible. But I know you yeah, you, you wouldn't do it, Millie, because you told me that you're scared of horror movies and pochong ghosts. I'm so scared of anything horror movies, anything ghosts. And especially I thought, why should I go to the theater, to uh, the cinema? I have to pay for my ticket to be scared. Okay, you know, so you, to, but, to but, feel scared. But maybe to, psychologically, if you dressed up as a ghost, it would, it would cure you. Yes, maybe. <laughs> maybe. So this Halloween, let's see. Okay. I'll go with the fangs and blood and everything. Take a picture maybe. and we'll run it next week. It is feedback time now. <laughs> Uh, reaction to our exclusive talk with an inmate in one of the country's dangerously overcrowded prisons. Casamago explained it this way. Low prosperity, moral decline, unfair law enforcement. And still more comments on the soccer stadium tragedy in Malang. This incident tainted Indonesian football and must not happen again. Here's how to contact us with your feedback. Email at hotindo at theindonesiachannel.com or comment through our Hot Indonesia or Indonesia channel, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube pages. Final words, Millie. Today is exactly the uh, Breast Cancer uh, Commemoration Day. And I have uh, some friends who I know are struggling and facing and still fighting it. So uh, today, this message is for you. You have all our support and our love get well soon and you'll definitely be winners and you're already winners in our eyes final words linda this week in jakarta a lot of cultural events are unfurling uh, we have indonesian dance festival a jakarta international literally festival and jakarta fashion week so if you live in jakarta or around jakarta and you can get into these events i suggest you take up the opportunity First time after the pandemic that all of these events are doing it uh, offline. Uh, And if you are viewers outside Indonesia or outside Jakarta, I do suggest you go online because some of these events are streamed online and they're fun. And I've gone to all three. Uh, There are days this week that I probably need to like, you know, clone myself, Uh, but it's fun. And my final words, this weekend, the world observes Internet Day in honor of the first text message sent on October 29, 1969 on a simple network in the U.S. The World Wide Web would come 20 years after that. Now imagine a world without the Internet. No emails, no Instagram, no Google, no Netflix. Those of us born before the Internet, we we did okay, but it revolutionized our lives in ways good and bad, mostly good. And one more thing before we go want to tell you that Hot Indonesia has been named a finalist for Best Talk Show in the 2022 Asian Television Awards. The winner will be revealed on December 8th in Singapore. We are honored to be on the short list of peers from throughout Asia. And that is Hot Indonesia for this week. For Millie Lukito and Linda Ibrahim, I'm Dalton Tanaraka. Teddy Makasi, please join us next time.